Losing trades. We all hate them, but we all take them. Trading is a game of statistics. If you have a win percentage, that implies you have a losing percentage, but you need to have a stop loss within your strategy to protect yourself from the worst case scenario. In this series, you are learning how you can utilize code within Thinkorswim to automate your backtesting. What we're gonna do today is implement an automated stop loss into that test so that you can find the best possible exit strategy for your statistical advantage. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the series, it does help out. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And let's jump right into the code. As always, if this looks like Chinese to you, you probably have fell behind or haven't yet seen the entire video series linked up in the top right right now. Catch up, come back to this video. All right, so we have a strategy on SPY that is now day trading SPY, buying dips when the RSI is below 40 and when the candle starts to curl, as long as that dip remains above the 200 moving average. And then we have it looking for profit take when the high breaks the highest point of the last 100 bars. When you're back testing, you have to think about future proofing as much as possible. Anybody can make a back test, make a bunch of money. That's great. Back testing involves working with static data. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble with back testing by just making it print a large profit number and thinking you found some great secret, but you have to future proof it as much as possible. And you do that one with stop losses, which is the most important part, which is what we're doing today, and other and others with more in-depth back testing, which will be another video within this series. Today, we're going to focus on stop losses. So stop loss is very, very important. Your, your system strategy must have one because like I said, even if the worst case scenario hasn't happened in the data set you're testing, you have to future proof for that. So all we're going to do, so we have parameters defined here, defined as buy and sell. And then we have order functions that are taking those parameters and actually telling the computer to act on those parameters. So for a stop loss, you can probably guess we're just going to come in and define a parameter set for a stop loss. We're going to call it stop loss, not stop less. And we're going to give it right now. Remember, the point of this video series is not to create some great profitable strategy. It's to teach you all how to fish. It's to teach you all how to do this. Now, funnily enough, the strategy is actually up $592 in the last 30 days, which is interesting, but uh, I'm not going to come into this looking for an amazing stop loss. I'm just going to throw in a number right now. Let's just stop out if the RSI goes below 30 because we're buying when the RSI is below 40 and starts to curl. So if that curl fails, continues rolling, the RSI gets below 30. Remember, we use these uh, trading studies to objectify our rule set. Not that the RSI going below 30 necessarily means anything, but it's just you need, if you're going to backtest using a, a trading system like this, you need objective rules when to say, okay, I have to get out now. And the RSI being under 30 is one way to do that. Is it the best? Probably not. That's not the point though. The point is to teach, right? So we have the parameter now defined as stop loss and we already have a sell order here, right? Add order, order type sell to close sell. Remember, this is selling when the sell parameter is true. Let's actually rename this parameter to make that make more sense. Let's make this parameter now profit. So this is going to be our profit sell condition. When the profit case is true, we sell to close. For our stop loss, all we have to do, I'm just gonna copy and paste this, control C, control V, is add another sell order, but set this one to execute if the stop loss is true. So this sell to close only, pro only fires, only executes if the profit parameter is true. Now this one will also fire if the stop loss is true. So if we go ahead and hit apply, uh, we were up $597, we're now up 606, so it actually makes it it, not necessarily that means it's better, but it does make it a little bit more profitable. Let's go see if we can find a couple of cases as well. Um, oh, let's ask, look, I'm going to do this really quickly. I want to change the names of them as well so that we can see when we look at the, uh, when we look at our chart, we know exactly what's going on. This is a profit sell and this is a stop sell. So name equals profit, name equals stop. Uh, so I know when I'm looking back on my charts, I know which one of those fired. That's very important in coding to know. That's how you really 
break down your testing, right? You know which variables are firing. So right here, we know this is a stop loss. Guess what? You bought the dip. The dip started to curl. You bought great didn't quite get to your profit target started to roll you're now selling at 414 instead of this this wouldn't have before this wouldn't have executed until the end of the day it wouldn't have gotten out until 4 12 38 this is why having stop losses is so important you need to protect yourself from the worst case scenario i mean the worst case scenario is even way worse than this i mean this is not even it's a relatively tame example i mean imagine in the future spy coming I mean, spy could have done anything here right stocks can do anything that's another big reason why you need stop losses this could have closed at 408 405 40 like like way down here this could have closed it could have got really ugly for the strategy that's why in your back testing you need stop losses so we now have a stop loss firing based off the rsi well our sell condition our profit condition is a price action strategy we made the first video of this series was how to add orders onto your charts then we talked about studies and then we talked about price action so we created an order for a stop loss we created an order using a study now let's create an order using price action let's kind of go over what we've already learned in this in this video series and and, and apply that as we go through the rest of this series all right so we we currently have our stop loss set to rsi 30 currently have an add order set to it let's use price action instead let's use the exact opposite of this we we take our profits when the high breaks over the highest point of the last 100 bars let's do the same thing so remember you get four data points from every candle open low close high did i say that right i think i said that right so we're going to use low if the low of the candle is less than the lowest uh, of the low of the last bar of the last 100 candles let's look at how this stop loss works and let's also plot that just like we plotted the high point let's plot the uh or we plotted the sell point let's plot the stop point here as well so that we can see this along the way let's call this um ba -ba 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 -ba, stop point and this is lowest of low not highest of high Bata bing, bata boom. So let's have that plotted there as well so that we can see exactly where this is selling. So now it's only up 523. Did go down a little bit. The PL went down, but it might still be more efficient. We'll get into how to do that testing later. And look at some of these stops it's taking now. Okay, so this is an interesting case. The same scenario we were just looking at with the RSI where it bought sold when it broke down the lowest actually just immediately rebought again because it curled and then got stopped out again unfortunately uh, so maybe it's not as efficient it's also just one case though right you can't look at whenever you're testing anything you can't just look at one case and go well this obviously doesn't work as well but remember remember as i go through everything i'm starting to talk fast and rant as I go through everything with this series, this series is to teach you how to fish. This series is not to give you profitable strategies, although there's more of that kind of that kind of videos on this channel as well. This series is to teach you how to create a strategy. You now know how to get trades on a chart, how to day trade, how to use studies, how to use price action, how to use both studies and price action on stop losses. Whether it's the most efficient or not, you know how to do it so that you can utilize this code. You can utilize things script inside of thinkorswim to start proving your own strategies and remember you don't have a strategy in the stock market if you've not proven it has a statistical edge if you're not trading something that's not a proven statistical edge you're just gambling your money away right so this is very important you all now know how to implement stop losses into the code hit the like button if you learned something if you're continuing to enjoy this series make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future episodes with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and sign out of this video I will catch you all in the next one.